So next up, let's take a look at Logic's EXS24 sampler. We'll find this up under Logic Stereo EXS24. And when it opens up, it looks exactly like this. Uh, I get this question a lot, what is a sampler exactly? A sampler is essentially just like a synthesizer. It has all the same basic components. It has filters, it has envelopes, it has LFOs, it has the same routing matrix that we just saw in the ES2 synthesizer. The one thing that's missing from this are the actual oscillators. A sampler uses real sampled waveforms, or bits of audio, as its oscillators. Uh, so I could take the sound of TV static, or radio waves from a shortwave radio, and use those as oscillators. I can sample someone singing, and use that as an oscillator and route that through all the filters and all of the parameters that I can use in a synthesizer to shape that sound. That's what makes samplers so unique. Um, the way we load up samples or load up instruments as they're called uh, is up right up here in this blank LCD display. If I click and hold on this, I'll get a drop down menu and it shows me all the different types of instruments I can load. Uh, this shows me everything from acoustic instruments, like guitars and basses. I've got pianos, strings, horns and woodwinds, ethnics. I've got drum kits, which has uh, uh, both electronic kits and uh, regular jazz kits and, and acoustic drum kits. And then if we keep going down our list, we'll get into analog waveforms and also some digital waveforms. So basically anything you can think of, any sound that you can record can become an instrument. Well, let's go ahead and actually open up one. Like, uh, let's open up this string ensemble. It's a good one to start with. Now you'll notice it says loading audio files for stringensemble.exs. Searching through the files, once it finds them, whoops, it says it's found this in two places. That's fine, I'll just hit OK. It'll load them up, and there we are. So now when I hit the key on the keyboard, we have a string sound. Nice little string ensemble. Um, what I'm going to do next, though, is show you the edit page. Uh, I get a, uh, this question a lot. How do I create my own instruments for the EXS24? Now, if you're using Logic Express, uh, it's unfortunate that you, you don't have the EXS24. What you have is the EXS24 player. The player only loads up pre-existing instruments. Now, if you own any uh, libraries. You can go to anywhere on the internet and buy like a Kai formatted CD-ROMs or anything like that. The e EXS24 will actually load them up. It actually will do a, a transformation and load up and, and all the patches will map out exactly uh, as, as they would inside like a hardware, a Kai sampler or something. Um, but if you wanted to load up something from scratch, we need to go to uh, the sampling edit page. Uh, and that's what I'm going to hit now. Uh, since we're in Logic Pro, we'll see this dedicated edit button right here. So I'm going to select that, and it will open up the actual instrument. And I'm just going to drag the uh, EXS24 down out of the way a little bit, and we'll look at this instrument editor. So when we first see this, you're going to see these little bars up at the top. Each one of these bars represents what we call a zone. The zone shows us what sample it is, and how that sample is mapped out on the keyboard. For instance, I have this zone right here selected. If I look down in this box, I can see the name of the sample. I can see uh, the zone range, which is F1 to G1. So it's actually over three keys, which is nice. Um, and all these other parameters, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. But you'll see there's actually two of these zones layered against each other. What's interesting about this is what we can do is something called uh, layering and velocity switching. So you can go through and multi-sample an instrument. Uh, you also notice there's a bunch, of, a bunch of these different samples. Why wouldn't you just take one sample and map it out the entire length of your keyboard? Well, if you did that, it would end up sounding like, as you went up the octave, it would sound like chipmunks. The sound would become really artificial and really strange. It wouldn't sound natural at all. Same thing if you went down in, in tone. It would start to slow down, almost sound like a, a broken record, or a record slowed down, played at the wrong speed. So you don't want that. So what we do is we do something called multi-sampling, where we'll go through and we'll sample uh, sections of the instrument as they go up in timbre. Once you get those samples, you can map them out across the keyboard.